Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be talking about my experience as a first year medical student. A few of you guys have requested that I talk about um, how first year was, um, my course structure and all that good stuff. So I'll cover that in this video today. So I went to medical school after a gap year. Within my gap year, I did some traveling, I did some working, and I did a lot of bumming around at home, but I didn't do any sort of preparation in that year before I went to medical school. I didn't do any revision or anything like that, which uh, I probably should have, given how tough <laughs> the first term of first year was. So in first year, I learned mostly preclinical stuff. Um, even though we uh, we had patient contact and things from the first week of medical school, most of what we were learning was um, sort of science. So physiology, pharmacology, uh, we were learning chemistry, physics, lots of other things that I didn't anticipate to be learning in medical school, like law and psychology and sociology and math, statistics and, you know, government policy and... <laughs> all this stuff that I didn't think I'd be learning in medical school. I just imagined we'd be learning human biology and that's it. But <laughs> obviously uh, there's more to being a doctor than just human biology. So yeah, first year was a mix of lots and lots of stuff, uh, but mostly science. So my course structure was PBL based. So uh, PBL means problem based learning which means that um, at the start of every week we'd be given a case scenario and we'd have to brainstorm that scenario and come up with learning objectives in order to be able to answer the questions within that scenario. So as well as PBL, we had lectures and we had seminars and we had tutorials and we had loads and loads of other different things, but the main sort of structure was PBL. So an example of a, um, a case we would have would be something like, Mary's a 57 year old lady um, she's come to you today uh, because she's feeling tired all the time. She has three children under four and she has a husband who works as a cleaner and she works as a secretary. She takes Ramapril for high blood pressure and she takes multivitamins. Um, she's so tired she can't go to work anymore. She can't look after her children and she's feeling quite depressed. Um, and that will be the scenario, for example. And so within our group, so groups would be made out of um, sort of eight, nine or 10 students, within that group would brainstorm the case scenario and we'd come up with learning objectives. So things that we'd need to know as doctors in, able, in order to be able to manage patients like Mary. So we'd want to know, you know, the differential diagnosis of being tired all the time. Uh, what about the medication that she's taking, this Ramapril? What, what class of medication is it? Uh, what side effects? does it have what is its mechanism of action what other medication types are there in that group could they be causing mary's tired all the time mary's also going to work but she can't um she can't go to work anymore because of her tiredness so what kind of sort of social structures are there to help people like mary is she able to access benefits is she able to access sort of psychological help uh, what about her husband how does he feel about all of this um, would he be able to manage the children as a cleaner uh, what about the physiology of tiredness how come women get more tired than men sort of thing um, what else do you want to know? The sociology of all of this, the psychology of how Mary's feeling, how uh, her husband is feeling. Uh, we want to know things like iron deficiency. How come people don't feel tired all the time? How come she's feeling tired all the time? We want to know <laughs> uh, lots of different things. You know, we'd have to look at the physiology, the pharmacology, the laws, um, even the government structures of everything to do with that scenario. And we'd each be assigned a learning objective and we'd have have to cover that learning objective within the week. At the, at the start of next week we'll then um, feedback what we've uh, found out about each of our learning objectives and the idea is that um, after we've um, spoken about it everybody is on the same level and everybody knows everything that there is to know about being tired all the time. So PBL um, was really difficult for me. I found it really, really, really difficult at the start because I'm naturally very quiet and very reserved, but PBL required you to speak up and argue your point and all that stuff, which, you know, I wasn't used to at all in first year. I hadn't done any of that uh, during my A-levels or anything. So I found it really, really tough. And the feedback I used to get from teachers was that uh, you're so quiet and really quiet, you need to speak up and all that stuff. but 
<laughs> I obviously um, learned to speak my point and to get my point across um, as the years went past. But honestly, the first the first term especially was just really hard because I never said anything. Another thing that um, I found really difficult during my first term was that um, many of the students in my year were postgraduate students. I hadn't anticipated that I'd come to university and there be other students who'd already had um, other degrees who'd already been to university. I don't know why, I'd, I'd, al I'd always imagine that um, you know, everybody will be the same age, everybody would be coming from A-levels like I was. And so <laughs> when I started and I had people already had, you know, master's degrees, PhD degrees, I was so intimidated by all of these people, I, I just couldn't cope. As you know, medical school is very competitive. It's competitive to get into, it's competitive to survive because you're compared to your peers at every point you know everybody is ranked against each other and so you don't want to be at the bottom and I literally felt like I was at the bottom all the time because um, because of these postgraduate students they'd already been to university they knew how to you know read at such a level they knew how to research they knew how to look at papers and things and I didn't know any of that I was just um, you know a 19 year old <laughs> who just come from A levels doing her biology and chemistry and stuff and I hadn't looked at any anything to do with uh, learning at a high level, a level higher than A levels and yeah it was tough in the first term to get my head around that. As well as being intimidated by all these postgraduate students the work was just so hard. Oh it was so hard. You know um, when you start you're given, obviously we were learning lots of um sort of science physiology pharmacology chemistry organic chemistry physics even i hate physics with a passion and we're learning maths and law and psychology and all this stuff it was so much learning and the thing with higher education like with any course i imagine you go there and um you know they set the standard and then you have to meet that standard some way um i'd imagine that you know you'd be eased into the learning you'd be eased into the science and stuff but <laughs> there was none of that there was none of that you were told um what you needed to learn so lectures would cover just the basics of what you'd need to learn and then it was up to you to go back to go home and obviously learn and revise and make sure you understand everything that was in the lecture ready for the next lecture because nobody was going to wait for you and you had to understand everything and learn everything before exams so my uh, my university had um, exams as well as exams at the end of the year we had exams at the end of each term and at the end of each module so it's seemed like constant exams 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 which um, was really hard to get my head around um, in the first year so um, in terms of timetable my usual days would start at um, eight o'clock or nine o'clock and would end at five o'clock and it would be you know lectures and lectures and then uh, anatomy sessions and then tutorials and then seminars and things it was just a mixture um, every day Monday to Friday I would have to go in um, if I was doing placement then days would vary so um, I would go to primary care placement which is going to the GPs uh, once a week and you know the bus would pick us up at maybe seven o'clock and then we'd get to the surgery for 8, 8.30 and then we'd start the day and then the bus would pick us up at 5 o'clock. So placement days in primary care were longer because we had to travel to different um, surgeries, to our surgery which would be uh, I think in my first year it was um, in Southwold I think or Great Yarmouth or somewhere like that way. Um, so yeah, I had to, to get the bus, uh, which was provided by the university, so it was good. Uh, but um, yeah, it was a lot of traveling on primary care day. Um, we would then have secondary care placement, which is placement in a hospital at the end of each module. And this would be 
from four weeks every day for four weeks uh, up to you know 15 weeks depending on which module you're doing and you'd have to go in every day um, either sitting clinics or go on the ward and things and also have to go in for tutorials that are put on by the hospital and learning clinical skills and learning communication skills and things and again the day in secondary care placement would vary from eight o'clock to five o'clock or even after that especially if you're doing um, a surgical sort of attachment you'd have to be there really early so before um, before eight o'clock sometimes you'd be there before seven o'clock to make sure you see the patients you clock the patients before they go to theatre and then you'd be able to present the case to the consultant afterwards um, if you're doing a medical placement usually the start was eight o'clock and it would start with a ward round where uh, the consultant would lead the, the ward round and there would be other doctors as well as you the medical student and then you'd be asked to you know examine the patient point out some clinical signs and, and things and yeah it just, it just varied depending on which um, rotation you were doing we also did um, anatomy in first year and we did anatomy in, in every year actually uh, uh, of medical school but um, anatomy uh, the way we did anatomy was using cadavers so um, we'd each be assigned a cadaver and we'd use it to um, to learn all the all the anatomy that we needed so in first year we did mostly uh, muscles so muscles of the whole body and then um, each year we did different other things so in second year we did um, heart and lungs anatomy and all that stuff and then by the end of fifth year we'd learned um, pretty much all the anatomy there was to learn about the human body and we we're using cadavers to do that Uh, clinical wise um, as I already said we had patient contact from the first week and we were learning communication skills so how to communicate as a doctor how to listen as a doctor how to um, conduct a consultation from start to finish and all that stuff and obviously that was built on um, every year but in first year we were just learning the uh, the basics so the basic sort of structure we learned and the structure that I think is used by most medical schools in the UK is the Calgary Cambridge um, sort of of layout of um, history taking and examination and differential diagnosis and closing the consultation and all that stuff so yeah every year we learned um, using the Calgary Cambridge um, proforma and then we built on um, each bit accommodation wise um, I lived in student halls which means that um, you know it's just like a, a flat and then within that flat everybody would have a sort of mini flat for themselves so I had my own sort of mini flat within a massive flat and I lived with other people who were non-medics some were medics and then we shared the kitchen but everything else uh, we had our own sort of bedroom and bathroom and sort of small living area but uh, we share the kitchen and it was really I mean it was good and bad like any other student accommodation the good bits were uh, it was very social um, I had friends that were not medics I had friends that were medics as well as non-medics which is really handy because if your friends are just medics you're just going to spend your whole time talking about medicine and yeah it just gets depressing <laughs> so my friends were you know some were doing drama some were doing law some were doing nursing some were doing art so yeah it was it was a nice you know mix of people within that uh, another good thing was that um, you know it was such a good sort of social environment and everybody became really good friends I'm still friends with all those people today um, a good five six years later so um, it's a good thing to, to live in student halls I'd recommend it if you are applying um, I mean if you're living outside of student halls and living by yourself I think it's more difficult for you to keep in touch with um, what's going on in medical school so I know a few of my friends who are living outside of student halls found it really difficult to um, sort of keep up with social events that were going on and so they'd miss out miss out on a lot of things and it'd be sort of it's tougher to make friends if you're if you're an outsider right so if you're living away from others whereas if you're in um student halls then you cook together you eat together and stuff and you you form friendships that way the bad bits of living in student accommodation is uh, <laughs> the biggest thing is that um, if not everybody's a medical student then not everybody understands your struggle right so it was um, out of all the eight people that I lived with only three of us were actually medics the rest of the people weren't medics and so they had different courses like drama which you know they had to turn up for 
um, turn up for two days out of the five day week and you know they were okay <laughs> whereas we had to turn up for every day and there were long days and placements were really long and you know sometimes people don't understand that you're actually having to work hard all the time constantly and people would want to uh, go on parties and things and they probably didn't understand so much about our struggle and our need to get work done and to revise and stuff but you know that's a minor bad thing and that's just typical of any um, university accommodation you just get a mix of people and sometimes you understand your struggle sometimes they don't understand your struggle another bad thing would be um, cleanliness so obviously students are notorious for being so dirty <laughs> and if you're somebody like me who is probably OCD type clean um, it's, it's such a struggle to deal with kitchens that are so so dirty you can hardly like find a surface to do anything uh, but yeah it's just it's just a part of being a student I think um, it's a minor bad thing again it's just part of the experience and everything that you experience at university you just laugh at when you finish because it's just it's just part of the experience and it's fun I funded my first year uh, personally uh, as well as my family obviously so I didn't get a student loan or anything for my first year so all the all the accommodation all the school fees and all the tuition fees and all that was paid for by me and my family and it was really really hard because as well as learning and being a first year medical student I also had to go to work to earn money to be able to pay my way through university so I worked um, as a healthcare assistant uh, for different agencies and for different hospitals and I used to work night shifts on Friday nights and Saturday nights initially and this was really really hard because <laughs> as well as having to revise and trying to make sure that I wasn't behind and work and things I also had to go out and work and in first year I didn't have my car then so I had to get the bus to <laughs> to everywhere which just added to the time and honestly it was it was really hard at the time um, it seemed like you know I was just doing it it didn't seem that hard but looking back it was actually quite tough because there was just no time to do anything else besides go to university, sleep, go to work, go to university, sleep and go to work and that sort of thing. So yeah, my first term was, was, really, was really hard. After the first term had finished, everything just got so much better. Obviously, um, I wasn't the only person who was going through the hardness of having to um, learn at such a high level and also had to get used to being away from home, being away from family and all that stuff. But after first, after first term, I um, got used to everything. I got used to working my night shifts, got used to revising, got used to lectures, anatomy and all that stuff, got used to all the clinical work, the communication. I became uh, more confident in my communication, especially in PBL and I used to speak up and I made loads of friends and all that good stuff. So yeah, it was just my first term that was really hard. But after that, I got used to everything and um, yeah, it, it just got better and better. So the first thing I'll say for anybody who's starting medical school is don't be intimidated by anybody else. I know it's really competitive um, going to medical school and being a medical student, but at the end of the day, you're all going to learn the same stuff. It might take you the longest time to learn anything compared to everybody else. So say for example, compared to anybody, say somebody who has a PhD, but Honestly, by the end of fifth year or sixth year, whatever year uh, you finish, you would have learned all the same stuff. So don't worry about um, the fact that everybody, or not everybody, but some people are um, ahead of you slightly when you first start. Even the guy who had um, the PhD in my first year didn't make it. He didn't make it to the end. And, you know, most of us with our A-levels uh, made it before he did. So, you know, don't, don't worry about it. Get your work done early. There is so much, so much work to be done in first year, in any year actually of medical school, it's just relentless. There's assignments after assignments, after exams, after everything. So anything that comes your way, as in any assignments that needs to be done or any um, PBL work that needs to be done if you're doing PBL or any supervision preparation that needs to be done, get it done early because honestly, 
um, <laughs> it just piles up and piles up and you get to a point where you kind of cope you don't know what to do first because there's so much to be done and you know at some point I even found myself chasing deadlines I was doing things uh, sort of prioritizing things in a way that um, you know which deadline was first and I do that thing first because I just I wasn't um, as organized um, in first year as I you know as I was in second third and fourth and fifth year uh, you just learn to be to become more organized really and you learn to manage your time and things but yeah just do your do your work as soon as it comes because you also want to have a life outside of medical school you don't want to be spending your life doing assignments and if you're not organized then you know you'll find that this is what you're doing if you're struggling with anything anything at all then you need to um you know go speak to somebody everybody's assigned a personal tutor uh, when they start medical school usually they're doctors consultants who are there to talk to you and to help you along with stuff and to put you in touch with people that can help you if you're sort of worried about stuff or if you're suffering from something or if your health is suffering and all that stuff even if you're just um, you know unhappy there are people out there that are there to talk to you and to help you and to you know be a shoulder to cry on really because honestly it's really really tough especially first year because for most people it's the first time that you're away from home away from family and this first time that you have to be responsible to be a responsible adult and you have to deal with you know the pressures of work the pressures of making friends and all this and if you're in a relationship the pressures of having to cope with that relationship as well as being a medical student which is really hard uh, speaking from experience but yeah if you're if you're struggling with anything or if you're really worried about something or if you're behind on work uh, then speak to somebody early because um, you know there's no point saying oh by the way after exam after your exam uh, to say oh by the way um, I wasn't actually feeling very well and I didn't get time to revise and all that stuff because then you know that seems a little bit mm, people won't take you that seriously if you say after your exam that something was wrong so yeah before your exam before your assignment or anything then um, speak up and say to your personal tutor to any sort of senior person in your medical school or you can even go to the dean of students the dean of students in any university is really good for help uh, you know pastoral support help with planning your revision timetable help with planning your cv and all that yeah speak to them <laughs> so as i said i used to work um, as a healthcare assistant in first year if you want me to do a video about working as a medical student or working um, during university then let me know i did so many different jobs <laughs> during my medical school years uh, but that's a completely different video but if you're going to be working and if you need to work i recommend that you leave your first term and possibly your second term uh, free don't work in those terms because you want to have the time to get used to the system make some friends get used to the city if you're moving to a new city and then you can work in your third term or even in your second year I worked for my first term and it was really difficult to um, juggle working for money and working to try and get my degree so I don't um, I don't recommend that you work in your first term if you absolutely have to then you know work very 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 minimum and try and avoid doing night shifts like I did because <laughs> they just make you tired even though you get more money working at night and um, all that stuff I don't I don't recommend it in first year go to other freshers events that your medical school puts on um, every medical school I'm sure in the UK has a medical society a med sock and they usually put on things like you know the grad ball or the first year's ball or the freshers ball or any sort of pub events um, lcr events and things go to all of those because you're going to meet loads of new people loads of friends uh, meet loads of uh, people from the years above actually and that's really helpful when you need stuff like uh, books that they don't need or if you need somebody to get you scrubs from hospital <laughs> then you know having a friendly uh, person from a from years above uh, is helpful and you meet all these people when you go to all these um, freshers events they're really fun and they're usually quite cheap and they're very sociable so yeah go go to them if you can another thing um, that I'd say is don't worry about buying books and things or even a stethoscope in your first year because um, you're just going to waste money Again, I was one of those people that um, got the reading list from my medical school and I bought every book on the reading list. <laughs> Waste of money. 
um, most of those books I did not use. Um, it was just a complete waste of time and money because um, I looked at the books and, you know, I'm one of those people that need the book to be written in a certain sort of font and in a certain way for me to like that book. And if it's not in the particular font that I like or written in the particular way that I like, then I can't use it to revise and I can't use it to do anything. So it's just a waste of money, really. And I bought so many books, which, um, you know, I still have now and I don't need them anymore. I guess I should just give them away maybe to you guys. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, don't waste your money in first year buying books or even a stethoscope. Books wise, you can go to the library. Every library will have the book that you need. And even if your particular library doesn't have that book, you can join the British Library, which, um, you know, is in London. And they will send you the book that you need if your uh, university library doesn't have it. So yeah, don't waste money buying books. Get the library, uh, sorry, get the book from the library, use it for a bit and then, you know, if you really like the book and the way it's written and the font, if you're like me, then you can then go and buy it. Um, and you can buy it from uh, people from the years above, actually. There's so many people that um, don't need books um, in the year above. Uh, they've used them in first year, second year and stuff and so they can sell them to you cheaper than going to buy them new. So, yeah. Don't, don't buy books until you know that you really like that book and you, you're going to use it. Um, stethoscopes wise, again, you don't really have to have a stethoscope or even any other equipment um, in first year because most of the time is preclinical, so you're not going to use it very much on people. Um, I bought my, my stethoscope in first year, it was really expensive. Um, I mean, it's a good thing that I bought it, um, like an expensive one, a good quality one. Uh, because I'm still using it now. Um, so yeah, if you're going to invest in a, th in a stethoscope, then invest in a good one. Don't just buy any one just for the sake of it. Because there's so many sort of cheap stethoscopes out there and you, you, can't, you can't hear heart sounds with them. <laughs> so buy, buy a good, good, good quality stethoscope. Mine uh, I bought is a Cardiology 3. I can link the... Um, link um description bar bought it from litman and i got engraved for free and um all that good stuff um i have uh, shown you guys my stethoscope in a previous video um i think it was the uh what's in my bag video um i'll put a link down down below if you haven't seen it so you can see my stethoscope but yeah i spent a good amount of money on it and i bought it in first year but i didn't need to buy it in first year because i hardly used it in first year so yeah you guys don't have to buy um, a stethoscope for first year unless unless maybe university tells you to buy it in first year but on the most part I'm sure um, you hardly need a stethoscope in first year. So with the competition of being in medical school and of being a medical student everybody is so fixated on getting their CV you know looking all flowery and nice um, in their first year which you know I was one of those people but I'm telling you now that you don't have to be one of those people there's so much time to do stuff for your CV after your first year so I was um, when I started medical school I wanted to be a plastic surgeon <laughs> uh, but then I changed my mind to be a pediatrician and then I changed my mind to be a respiratory physician and then I changed my mind to be a neurologist but now I want to be an obstetrician and gynecologist and I think uh, my mind is set now I don't think I'm going to change my mind but during all that time um, you know, I was trying to get audits done, I was trying to get research done, um, I was trying to get things, uh, you know, to put on my CV to make sure that when I'm applying for specialist training, I don't have to, uh, to you know, I don't have to worry about uh, making sure I can prove that I want to do that, uh, that, that uh, specialist, specialism, I think. Um, so yeah, I was so fixated on that. And the fact that, you know, everybody else had master's degrees and bscs and phds and here i was with my a-levels <laughs> so i wanted um really to make sure i was um, at the same level as these other guys so i spent so much time trying to do audits and write papers and things which you know looking back there was no need to do any of that in first year because i had so much time in second year third year fourth year fifth year and i also did um an intercalated degree between year four and five so you know i had so much time to get all of that done i didn't need to worry about it so i'm telling you now that if you're in first year don't worry about getting your cv looking all flowery you have so much time to do it in don't worry about getting audits about getting papers about doing research outside of school 
you know, there's so much to be done anyway in first year in any of medical school, but first year is particularly tough because you you need to, you know, get your head around being a medical student. It's completely different to doing your A-levels and things. And even if you've done another degree, it's completely different to doing any other degree, even a science degree, you know, it's completely different. So don't worry about um, your CV in first year. Start worrying about it in second year, third year. You have so much time. Um, yeah, just get your head around first year, get the work done, make sure you understand the process and um, worry about your CV, you know, other years. <laughs> Be careful about your non-medic friends. Um, those people that are doing drama and art and English and things, you have to turn up for two days a week and then, you know, that's it, they, they pass first year. Uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't be um, fooled by those people because your course is different. You have to turn up every day and you have to pass first year in order to continue to second year. So some courses just need you to, you know, turn up for a certain amount of days a week and then they don't count. Whatever you learn and whatever exams you do in first year don't count. I remember, I think one of my friends was doing art and all he had to do was turn up uh, maybe once a week, twice a week, and then that's it. Any exams he did in first year didn't count. He was just automatically, um, you know, put into second year, which um, medicine is not like that, guys. <laughs> you have to pass every exam you do, and you have to pass the whole year in order to progress to second year. I had people that were in my year who didn't pass first year, who had to reset second year and then, you know, some were lucky and passed that reset, but some weren't so lucky and they had to reset the whole year. Now you imagine your whole friends, all your friends are going, um, <clears throat> all your friends are going to second year and you're going, uh, you know, you're staying in first year, you're redoing first year. And there's nothing, in my opinion, there's nothing worse than, you know, staying behind because you didn't take it seriously. So take it seriously, it counts, everything counts in first year. And um, different universities have different policies, but in my university, um, I trained in Norwich, in my university, you had um, only two goes to pass your exam. So if you fail it the first time, and then you fail it at the reset, then you're not allowed to come back to that year. You have to either reset the year, or a decision will be taken to say, you know, you're not good enough for medicine basically so it's, it's literally that cutthroat <laughs> um, so take it seriously pass all your exams and make it to the end last but not least enjoy it you've made it to medical school you've aspired to be a medical student for the longest time and now you're here so have fun honestly it's tough it's stressful and it's depressing sometimes but it's also fun uh, most of the time. So have lots of fun, there's lots of fun to be had and this could possibly be the best year of your life so far. So yeah, have lots and lots of fun. That's about it guys, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed my experiences video and um, the tips that I've given will come in handy at some point. If there's anything you want me to do next, then obviously comment in the comment section down below. Um, I'm so glad that, you know, many people are commenting in my uh, on my videos and I'm getting new subscribers. Welcome to everybody who's um, new to the channel. Thank you for subscribing. Hopefully, um, you know, my videos will be interesting and useful and all that stuff. So, yeah, I will see you at my next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.